Jai <laughs> Sri Sri Radha Krishna Gopinath Sham Kund Radha Kunigidi Govardhan Ki Jai Brindavan Tam Ki Jai Navadip Tam Ki Jai Jagannath Puri Ki Jai Ganga Mai Ki Jai Jamana Mai Ki Jai Dulsi Devi Ki Jai Bhakti Devi Ki Jai Samaveta Bhakta Brinda Ki Jai All glories to the assembled devotees All glories to the assembled devotees All glories to the assembled devotees Thank you very much, Maharaj. And thank you very much, Ekendra Prabhu, for the lovely Kirtan. Thank you, dear devotees, for joining once again as we kick off our week with a spiritual note. Um, and this evening, we'll continue on the second canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. Uh, Maharaj, uh, would you like to... I think we're st- we didn't finish three, two, uh, rather, um, two... 523. So I think we're still there. Okay. So we'll do 2523. Uh, I think so. i just put it up on the chat. And as always, feel free to participate uh, on uh, for the questions and answers and uh, with your comments. I'll just put up the text. Haribo. 23. Haribo. Thank you. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Jnana Tamidan Tasya Gyananjana Shalakaya. Shakshurn Militam Jena Tasmai Shri Gudave Namaha. Shri Chaitanya Manobis Tams Tapitam Jena Bhutale. Swayam Rupa Koda Mayam Dadati Shapadantikam Bande Hang Shri Gudo Shri Jatapadakamaman Shri Gudun Vaishnavamstra Shri Rupam Shagrajatam Shahagana Raganatan Vitam Stam Sativa Sadhaitam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakan Vitamstra He Krishna Karuna Sindho Dina Bandho Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostude Tapta Kamsana Gaurangi Radhe Vrindavane Shri Prashabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hori Priye Pancha called the Tarupyascha Kripa Sinto Pyevacha. Padita nam Pavanebio Vaishnavebio Namonama. Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nitananda. Sri Adveta Gadadhar Shiva Shadi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda. 
हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे Thank you all again for uh, taking part. My respects to all. You're, I appreciate that you're coming to these classes. This is not a a uh, a snappy, uh, with it current issues seminar. A uh, seven steps to do this or ten things to, uh, about that or. A, a happy tour of uh, holy places, or something like that. It's fairly it, well. It's Srimad Bhagavatam, and thank you all so much for encouraging me and and encouraging all who participate by coming just to uh, hear Srimad Bhagavatam and discuss Srimad Bhagavatam. This is our real uh, business, and Prabhupada. Uh, this is what he encouraged us to do, to, to speak Srimad Bhagavatam and hear Srimad Bhagavatam. Back in, I forget what the year was, Prabhupada's Vyas Puja and Nubrindavan, Prabhupada did those uh, Bhagavat disc, Dharma discourses. And he said that uh, all of our sannyasis, or he said our sannyasis, I don't know if he said all our sannyasis should do this, to uh, speak Srimad Bhagavatam. And uh, Kendra says this was most snappy and with it subject matter. So uh, thank you all for, for taking part. This is particularly unsnappy section of Srimad Bhagavatam. It takes its technical and the uh, perhaps a little difficult to sort out. Uh, so we're spending a little time on it. We're not uh, zipping through it. And I'm fairly certain we'll not fully understand it. I'm totally certain we'll not fully understand it. Who can fully understand anything in Srimad Bhagavatam? But we'll try to get a, a better understanding of, of these topics, especially since this will come up again. It's not that, that what we're reading here is, is, well, you go through it and you're done with it. It's going to come back and... Um, We'll revisit it in third canto, especially, and even in, in later cantos. So if we take the time to study it now, we'll be better equipped then. When I learned Spanish in school, I have to say that I found ways that I could do things sort of easily. You know, I didn't have to learn all the, the, the uh, tenses carefully if I uh, employed certain other tenses that I could use under any circumstance. So it was sort of a cheating or lazy man's uh, approach to things. But then now, if I'd like to use those tenses, I'm not so clear on, on uh, not so, so fluid with them. So it, it, it will pay, it will, it will be to our benefit to try to study these things as far as possible. And well, we will come back to them later, so we'll, we'll get another another chance, and we'll reread the canto uh, at some point, as, as I'm rereading it now. So this is Srimad Bhagavatam to Nityam Bhagavata Seva to serve Srimad Bhagavatam by reading, by by hearing, by thinking about it, by reflecting on it, by discussing it with devotees. So thank you all for for being part of this enterprise. This is 5.2.5.23, which uh, I think we had more to talk about. Mahatastu vikurvanad raja sattvo pabrimhitat tama pradhanas tapafad dravya gana kriyatmakaha. The Material activities are caused by the Mahatattvas being agitated. At first, there is the transformation of the modes of goodness and passion, and later, due to the mode of ignorance, matter, material knowledge, and material activities, or different activities of material knowledge come into play. So this is, these are uh, Mahatas, Mahatattvas there, and Vakurvanad, there's 
um, reaction, the kurvana from reaction, the uh, mahatattva becomes agitated and things start cooking. As we discussed last time, it's the glance of the Lord that makes everything go. Saw Aikshita uh, by his glance, he activates material nature. And as we also discussed, Lord Shiva carries that glance and as is expressed in Brahma Sanghita, consorts with his, uh, with the, the external potency. There's a combination of Lord Shiva and Durga and material creation gets going. Mahatastu Vikurvanad Rajasattva Prabhimhitat. In the beginning, uh, Sattvagun and Rajagun are prominent, but then Tama Pradhana Stravavat, then Tamagun uh, picks up and becomes prominent. And these modes are manifest Dravya Kri Jnana Kriya Atmakaha. These terms again, Dravya, Jnana, and Kriya, uh, will come up in different contexts. Dravya means stuff, material stuff. Jnana means material knowledge. And Kriya means material activities. The Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur says that the sense would ask that we reverse the, the last two terms and have jnana, kriya, and uh, dravya, kriya, and jnana. Because dravya, the material stuff, is associated with the mode of ignorance. Kriya, material activities with the mode of passion. And jnana, uh, material knowledge with the mode of goodness. There's also an association with the sense objects, uh, then the senses which become active, and the mm, supervising demigods, jnana, uh, who are in the background. Now let's see what we might not have covered last time. Well, I'll start here by a slight cultivation of the mode of goodness. A glimpse of spiritual nature is perceived, but due to the prominence of the mode of passion, the mode of goodness becomes adulterated. Therefore, one cannot transcend the limits of the material, no, material modes, and therefore realization of the Lord who is always transcendental to the modes of material nature becomes very difficult for the living entities, even though prominently situated in the mode of goodness through cultivation of the various methods. In other words, and this gets quite technical, gross matters are adibhutam, their maintenance is adidaivam, and the initiator of material activities is called adhyatma. In the material world, these three principles act as prominent features, namely as raw material, its regular supplies, and its use in different varieties of material creation for sense enjoyment by the bewildered entities. All right, I think we've, we've covered this. Are there some questions? Not that there have to be, but if there are, we can talk about them before we go on. There's a uh, one from Vasudev Prabhu. From? From Vasudev Prabhu on the chat. Let's see what we've got. Okay. Oh, could you elucidate why the Srimad Bhagavatam repeatedly describes the Lord's pastimes of creation and what is the benefit of hearing this Leela. The first thing is that material creation is what we're in. 
this is our context. This is our, our environment. This is our, uh, where we are. So it makes perfect sense for the Lord to be described in relationship. You know, we want to be relevant, right? This is like uh, the buzzword in preaching, to be relevant, to be relevant. Uh, so we think that to be relevant, we should be talking about nuclear physics, or we should be talking about string theory, or we should be talking about women's rights, or we should be talking about something else, the election or, or COVID. Um, but this is relevant that we're in the material creation with all of its various features. And that creation has a relationship to the Lord, which we don't understand. We're thinking, we're thinking that material nature is everything, that there's nothing beyond nature. We're thinking that nature is ours to do with according to our strength. We miss the personality of Godhead in the background. If we have any conception of God, we, it's distant, distant, distant. Uh, there's so many things. So we're in a, a misconception and where the next verse will describe false ego, which is what we're working under. We're thinking I'm this body, everything is within my, is, is up to me. In so many ways we're, we're bewildered. So to undo that bewilderment, it's necessary for us to hear about these activities of Krishna. For the neophyte devotee, it's as beneficial to hear about the Lord's creation pastimes as it is for the Paramahansas to hear about Krishna's Raslila. And for the, the beginners, simply to hear about Raslila will not be the most mm, therapeutic course. The, the, the course begins with understanding the material creation so that we'll understand when we, as Prabhupada explains, when we get to the Raslila, we'll be able to as Prabhupada says, capture the effects of the 10th canto. One who's got carefully gone through the first nine can capture the effects of the 10th canto. It means we, we can get it. If we just jump to the 10th canto, we may not get it. Get it means we may still think of Krishna as an ordinary human being or an extraordinary human being or someone in, in some ways like us and not understand. I'm going to get a little water, excuse me. So hearing this Shristi Leela of the Lord, the Lord's creation pastimes, enables us to appreciate uh, how um, great Krishna is, as our Adi Purusha in Bhakti Center says, how, how Krishna is wonderful. Uh, all of these things we can understand um, by mm, reference to the material nature. My mom was saying today, she was remembering that as a child, uh, when I was a child, they, we all went to Niagara Falls And uh, even she was saying that, you know, there's such power there, such majesty that you think there must be some, some power behind it, some, you know, some something. So I, she gave a, a, a rare theistic um, <laughs> statement there. Uh, but yes, when we see the material energy, it's powerful. You go to the, to the, to Niagara Falls, or you go to Yosemite, or you are to Sequoia National, and you see these wonderful manifestations of material nature, and we we think this is this is great. Maybe we even think uh, this is God. Nature is God, as as many people think. 
And people can become so absorbed in material nature that they dedicate their lives to one or another aspect of it, trying to understand it or exploit it. So Bhagavatam wants us to understand Ekamkshena uh, Stotojagat, that all of this material creation is resting on one portion of Krishna's energy. And it tells us how it's resting on Krishna's energy or how the Lord is involved. These are all questions. Is God involved in the world? Is God not involved in the world? Is God present? Is God not? Is he within the universe? Is he imminent or transcendent? These are all questions that come in and they're explained uh, with uh, precision, considerable focus in, in Srimad Bhagavatam. They're not just sort of left like, well, you know, we tell these stories and then it's, then you can go looking somewhere for philosophy and sort of patch it all together, put the philosophy together with the stories and you've got something. But from the beginning, the Bhagavatam uh, is giving us philosophical understanding of Krishna. So that when we reach the 10th canto, uh, we'll share that sense of amazement that the Param Brahma, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the person from whom all these energies emanate and by whom they're controlled, that personality of Godhead is crawling in the in the courtyard of Nanda Maharaj, is playing with the Brajbasis just like an ordinary child. You'll be able to, to appreciate these things uh, after carefully studying the, these, these pastimes of the Lord. Tulsi Priya says, I always think of this knowledge as an existential you are here sign. We literally need to literally know our place. Yes, it shows us where we are, the little corner of, of Krishna's creation. And it shows us what, how Krishna is related to where we are, uh, even materially. Is that all right, Vasudev? Okay. Um, let's see. There's. Let me move this chat box so I can see more. Panchatattva says, I happened on an interview of David Attenborough, the well-known naturalist who has been documenting natural wonders and later the decline of the overall health of the natural world since the 1950s. He can't get past agnosticism in spite of all his studies and in spite of his fascination with the majesties and mysteries of nature. Yeah, exactly. The, this is sort of the, the lowest stage of appreciation to appreciate that nature is so wonderful. Uh, that's something at least we're appreciating something is greater than us, but what's behind nature? And so the congratulations to those who are adopting the worldview of Srimad Bhagavatam. Uh, by this method, one becomes more advanced than the great scientists, the great naturalists, the great thinkers. And let's see, this is a, from Grudas. One may say, even if by some miracle I understand how the modes of nature are working and accept theoretically the presence of the Supreme Godhead who has created the modes, will I even have the adhikar, the qualifications to understand? Isn't this the essence of Prabhupada's statements and Shastric statements? that only the devotee who engages in transcendental loving service can, I guess, only to the devotees who engage, to the devotee who engages in transcendental loving service, can these secrets be revealed? 
Yeah, well, one becomes qualified, among other things, by hearing Srimad Bhagavatam, because hearing Srimad Bhagavatam is, is rendering devotional service. It's not that separately, of course, separately also, you know, we have prescribed duties, we have missionary activities to perform, but this is one of our prescribed duties just to hear Srimad Bhagavatam. So by hearing Srimad Bhagavatam and by performing missionary activities or practical service on the order of the spiritual master, one becomes purified. And with purified mind, purified senses, one can understand something of, of Krishna. Bhaktya mama vijanati. Only by devotional service is any of this possible. Okay. I don't think Tulsi Priya says that nature is greater because man can comprehend nature intellectually, but nature does not comprehend us. The conceit is that we are capable of destroying the planet, even though we are part of nature. So we are the gods capable of destroying nature by our unnatural creative turned destructive energies. Yeah. Uh, if I understand what you're saying here, we we get that nature is great, but we think that we may be nature, greater than nature, that we can bend nature to our purposes, that we can probe the mysteries of nature and harness nature for, for the good of mankind. So it's a sort of colonizing mentality as we... Uh, colonize India or colonize America or colonize you know, Africa. So we're going to colonize material energy and uh, use it for our profit. But material nature is not so easily exploited. Prabhin says, uh, wait, Tulsi Priest says, I meant to say by our will, yeah, that's another conceit, I guess, that we think that we can destroy the planet problems. You can't destroy anything. We're not that powerful that we're, we'll destroy the world, we'll destroy the planet. We're, look how powerful we are, that we're all on our knees because of a little microbe, a germ. Oh, how powerful we are. Prabhupada says, How far can we speculate to understand these topics or just accept it as it is blindly? For example, we have the fifth canto, cosmology. We have some models explained by devotees, although not explicitly stated in Bhagavatam. Whereas others say, just accept the Bhagavatam version. Yeah, we just accept the Bhagavatam version. The explanations are, and so on are, first of all, well, let's, to answer the doubts or questions of the non-devotees or those who are not, who have not surrendered. Um, are these just mythological, wild mythological depictions? Is this some, you know, the creation myth of the Hindus? Or is there, there more to it? Is there some, are there insights? Is there something of value here beyond uh, that we're missing if, we're, if we don't uh, take it on its own terms? So, of course, accepting doesn't mean accepting blindly. The example is there of the cobbler who, when he was informed that by Narada, that Narayan was pulling a elephant through the eye of a needle this way and that way, Prabhupada said. He accepted it. Uh, the speculator, speculating Brahmin couldn't accept it, but the cobbler accepted it. Nard Muni is astonished. How do you accept these things? Yes, I'm sitting under this banyan tree doing my work, and I see that 
um, from the banyan tree, there's so many seeds and each seed, there's a tree. So if Krishna can put a, a banyan tree, a huge banyan tree into a little seed, what can't he do? So it's not blind acceptance. It's, it's natural acceptance of the purified heart, but it goes to, uh, it's combined with philosophical understanding. Touch Tridhana Munio. Gana Vairagya Yuktaya. Pashant Yatmani Chatmanu. Bhaktiya Shruta Grihitaya. Gana Vairagya Yuktaya. The devotional service is fortified by knowledge and detachment from material world. These are complementary to bhakti. These are, uh, yes, they're, they're not just dry speculation or uh, dry renunciation. These are features of pure devotional service. Jnana Vairagya Yuktaya. So the, so it's not just blind acceptance, it's acceptance with knowledge, but even if one accepts blindly, if blindly you accept that this is a wristwatch, good, you get it. And if you want more information, then we'll tell you about what the wristwatch does or the history of the wristwatch, so many things. But otherwise, even without such things, such explanations, we just accept this is a wristwatch. Yes. That's not blind, that's intelligent. Then, as far as the Bhagavatam cosmology, we can just accept it. But if we're looking for deeper Shastric knowledge, if we want to expand our picture of what, what it is, then Bhagavatam is there. It's not that Bhagavatam is, you know, what is, you know, we just accept the Bhagavatam. Yes, but what's Bhagavatam saying? What is it that we're accepting? Do we just accept the, you know, what, what appears on the surface and then that's it? Or we, do we dig deeper and ask questions and try to understand? So the, this, this is part of reading Bhagavatam to try to uh, understand as far as possible. Again, with our mind and intellect, we're not going to understand everything. But with a devotional heart and with a spiritualized intelligence, one should try to understand what message is being given here, what picture is being painted for us. And also, if we want to present Bhagavatam as a credible source of authority, then we we need to answer questions because not everyone out there is just a is is pious, is willing to accept the Bhagavatam version. So for them we need some arguments, some logic, some evidence. Uh, if we, it would be great if we could just say to scientists, for example, well, this is what Shastra says. And they'd say, oh, what Shastra says, all right. But they're not, they're not in that space. They're, they're not so inclined. So then we have to say to them, sir, we have something very interesting here. There are these um, sophisticated ideas about cosmology that are found in this ancient literature. Hmm. So that has to be there. So it's, we're studying for our own understanding and also to help others understand. Samarpan says, Krishna has created the material world to make us feel that we can destroy or create something for the purpose. He's created it to us. To, well, he's created it, Prabhupada says, by our insistence. And we'll come to that in, 
the next verses, how Krishna is allowing us to act out our material activities. Because we're insisting. Anything else? Okay. Yes, Tulsi Priya has a question. So um, in the purport, it says, by a slight cultivation of the mode of goodness, a glimpse of spiritual nature is perceived, mm -hmm. but due to the prominence of the mode of passion, the mode of goodness becomes adulterated. So it's a little bit hard for me to understand a concept like the mode of passion in the absence of any specific behavior or mentality or activity that shows that it's the mode of passion. So if somebody is cultivating the mode of goodness, that means they're doing things that are, can be described as being in goodness. Mm -hmm. But then it says due to the imminence of the mode of passion. So that, that to me implies that there's some sort of amorphous mode of passion out there that's going to overtake my mode of goodness activities and then um, my mode of goodness will be adulterated by, but I don't know what that mode of passion is that takes over my, you know, that, that adulterates my mode of goodness activities if I'm cultivating that. Does that make sense? Somewhat. The, mm. Like if I'm already cultivating the mode of goodness, how does the mode of passion, you know, get get a foothold if i'm if that's if what i'm let's, doing is cultivating. let's turn to third canto well these okay. things actually will come come up for further explanation in the, in the very next verse of Srimad bhagavatam but from third canto there's a, par a verse that parallels that verse and it says The the material that ego springs up. This is the verse from the Mahatattva, which evolved from the Lord's own energy. Then, in the purport, in the beginning, from clear consciousness or the pure state of Krishna consciousness, the first contamination springs up, sprang up. This is called false ego. Or identification of the body with the self. So from clear consciousness, impure consciousness arises. Originally pure Krishna consciousness exists, but because of misuse of marginal independence, there's a chance of forgetting Krishna. So these things are going on. I don't think I'm doing a good job of answering your question. But um, um, I guess I think part of what it is is that I, I didn't I didn't take any rest this afternoon and so my mind is a little exhausted. <laughs> That's the real story. I'm, I'm struggling a little bit because I'm uh, a bit exhausted. That happens sometimes. Well, I'm happy to discuss it another day. Okay, we can put off the hard questions for some other time, right? Um, okay, only easy ones from this point onwards. That's right. The There are gradations, as there are gradations of modes of nature, there's gradations of tiredness. <laughs> there's the, the, sort of... Um, Preliminary tiredness is when you're 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 dealing with the text, that, but you're feeling a little, uh, you know, a little slow, a little less than than sharp. Then second grade tiredness is that you're speaking uh, one sentence, but you don't remember what the previous sentence was that you spoke. That's second grade tiredness. And first grade tiredness is that you're in the middle of the sentence and you don't remember how you got there. <laughs> uh, 
I'm I'm rapidly approaching that stage today. <laughs> Let us, yes, bring up those questions again the next time and I'll be better rested and we'll, we will deal with it. Uh, how it is that, that these modes of nature are interacting. It is a good question. I'm just, uh, as Manan Gopal Prabhu has indicated, I'm, I'm only up for easy questions for the next uh, maybe, 10 or 15 maybe minutes. Maybe early tonight. Samarpan, let's see how easy his question is. Srila Prabhupada says in this purport, therefore, one cannot transcend the limits of the material modes, and therefore, realization of the Lord, who is always transcendental to the modes of material nature, becomes very difficult for the living entities, even though prominently situated in the mode of goodness through cultivation of the various methods. Does this mean that all other transcendentalists, non-bhaktas, who are on the spiritual platform, cannot understand the Lord? Yes, bhaktya mama vijanati, yavanyas chasmi tatvata. One can only stand, understand me as I am by pure devotional service. We may understand something by pious, if one has pious credit, then one will, will understand something. But actually to understand Krishna consciousness extensively, it, one must have the mercy of the Lord. Spiritual master's blessings are required. Okay. Um, I think that does answer your question, doesn't it, Samarap and Prabhu? Okay. And yes, it does. Are there any other easy questions tonight? Okay. Um, one comment above. All right, let me look. Oh, Srila Vishnath Chakravarti Thakur says in uh, commenting on 5.26.38, in the beginning the second of the second and third cantos of Srimad Bhagavatam, I have already described how one can progress on the path of liberation. In the Puranas, the universe divided into... 14 parts is described as the gross body of the Supreme Lord, Narayan, made of material maya. If one reads the description of this external form of the Lord with great faith, or if one hears about it or explains it to others, and devotees and explains it to others and develops faith, bhakti, and pure intelligence, he will understand the topic of the Supreme Lord, which is like an Upanishad, difficult to understand. Yes. All right, and as I've done on previous occasions, I'm going to give you an early um, exit. You can take rest early tonight or uh, whatever it is that you'd like to do with 15 minutes because sometimes it's better to quit while you're ahead. <laughs> hey, Krishna. That's a good idea, Maharaj. And uh, thank you very much for another engaging session. And thank you, dear devotees, for, for your constant uh, support. Like Maharaj mentioned earlier, it's, it's, it's really wonderful that you know, so many devotees are consistently joining. And it's not that amazing in one sense, because this is a real live wire connection to the heart of Srila Prabhupada. And, and, all of you devotees are definitely rasikas of the essence of this Krishna consciousness philosophy. And we're very fortunate to have Mark giving us so much of his time. So um, just a regular quick announcements real quick. So of course we have the Thursday 
um, Ishta Goshti sessions still going on on uh, Maharaj's Zoom channel. So you can find that link on jswami.info. So please join on Thursdays at 7 p.m. And on this channel, um, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, we'll continue Shrimad Bhagavatam Second Canto with Maharaj. Uh, tomorrow, uh, Tuesday, we have uh, a new speaker, Shamal Kishori Devidasi. She's, uh, she's actually a great speaker and she's been uh, one of the leaders in the Gainesville area, uh, working with the Krishna house there. Uh, so she'll be speaking on the importance of uh, how her gratitude is the heart of Krishna consciousness. So please do join tomorrow evening and let us show our young speakers some support. Um, Thursday evening, we have Anuttama Prabhu uh, once again on this channel uh, and uh, that'll run out a week on Friday with Maharaj. So thank you once again for joining. And we will keep it very brief and say a quick Hare Bol to Maharaj. We'll leave it open for another 30 seconds and then Maharaj can take rest. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Thank you. Hare Bol. Hare Bol. Hare Bol. Hare Bol. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Shri Prabhupada Ki Jai. Hari Bo. Hari Bo.